about AI, what would you like to know more about AI within the sense of business? It's part of our work. Mm, I guess how like, it'll impact the future, the foreseeable future. Uh, the way I'm looking at it today is that it will change the specific response anybody can expect out of a data set. Mm. So, in a very simple way to describe that would be the law firm has 60 years of data. Every customer that goes in to their office, paperwork is created. Mm -hmm. The details of their personal lives are a piece of it because they're going in for a legal reason that may result in, if they give that to the lawyer, and the lawyer has a trust relationship where if that lawyer violates that trust, they go to jail. It's a yeah. piece where you can trust a lawyer with anything, knowing that on the other side of it, if they break it, they go to jail. <laughs> yeah. And that is a big deal. So yeah. people give a lot of information to lawyers. You need that to be private. You need that to be secure. Yeah. But you don't give it because you want them to know you better personally. You want a better result on your case. Mm -hmm. So for a while, it was on paperwork, and then paperwork fell away to uh, databases that are easily searchable if you can only... So now that it's all in databases at most law firms, the step with AI, as we call it, with these language models is to have the entire world's information commingled with the information of the law firm. So if you have the whole world's information and then 60 years of your law firm's data, you can do something new with it that might look like very specific categorization. If you've been in business long enough and you have a thousand police reports, if you have 10,000 police reports, if further than that, somebody on the internet has spent the whole of a year getting all of the publicly available police reports, and now they have a million of them from every case in the US, when that person who's walking into the office trusts you with their police report, that can be put into the system and then say, by all appearances, this police report fits into the category of bullshit and the person didn't do their job and now we're going to go investigate that police officer in a private way to see can we get this ruled as inadmissible can we get this police report thrown out and therefore our client does better and like that that's a hard thing it's not simple for anybody to make a judgment call and it's a person that does it at the end of the day and if your AI system is private, secure, for your firm only, and uh, enables the trust relationship that you are going to get in jail for breaking mm -hmm. to be existent, that's what I see in the foreseeable of the future of what we do. Oh. We could build the hardware box, put it in the law firm's office, make sure that it is offline and only connected to those people that are trusted to use it, to then feed into that system one or two new things, like you would be afraid to be in YouTube in a way mm -hmm. that maybe you would be okay to be in uh, Instagram because it's d a different story, I don't know, mm -hmm. but you would probably be okay with, if you knew the lawyer was keeping it safe, the possible outcome of getting that police report thrown out going up if you had a look at it from the perspective of it compared to the whole other world of police reports. Speaking of police reports, did you finally do yours? <laughs> no. You should do that ASAP so they can refund you. I don't want to because oh. it means at the end of the day, if you file a police report, then there's a potential crime. That is a crime. Someone stole your stuff. I know, and I don't like that. I trust people. You know me. Yeah, as but if someone still, you got press charges. I don't, yeah. Still, in, it's against the commandments in the Bible. There's not that many, but that's Pardon one me. of them. That's against that, the Bible? Yeah. So I would be Thou like, should not steal. I know. It's just morally wrong. I know. So it's like if people... Hey, morally, you have those? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Come on now. What's your favorite moral? Mm, probably being trustworthy and... Trustworthy is as good I think as trust is like, yeah, this trust is, is probably the biggest and then like uh, loyalty. Okay. Why do yeah. you trust me? Um, you never gave me a reason not to. 
Good. Mm -hmm. That's usually why I trust somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'll trust them from the beginning until they give me a reason, reason. not to. I'm the same way. And yeah. when they do, then all of a sudden, it's different. 100%. And it's not like a just black and white thing. It's like questions start coming up in my head. And then it's not even like I'll bail on somebody if I don't trust them. They just fit into a different part of my world. I'll they fit that. into the part where I don't trust those people and hmm. I behave a way around them that's not the same as the people that I do trust. Yeah. How do you know who to trust? Um, action. Action. Okay, use me continuing the example. What action would cause distrust? What, what would I do that would cause distrust? To cause like... Uh, going against a, your word or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe like, that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. yeah. It's the same way with customers. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what you say you're going to do, then the distrust becomes yeah. real. I like that a lot. Uh, I don't know how I can talk about that in AI land on Saturday, <laughs> except by saying... Trust AI. <laughs> well, no, I would say forget that. Oh, because I Don't trust AI. <laughs> part of it is whose AI? Whose AI do you trust? Oh, I don't yeah. trust OpenAI and Sam Altman and the Silicon Valley fat cats that are all <laughs> billionaires that are spending more billions to deal with what is a very straightforward mathematical concept. Yeah. Part of the core, the technical side of the AI, came from researchers at Google. Those researchers at Google were then moved into a position of publishing things in academic papers that are available to the public. Mm -hmm. So the whole public knows about the meth and then a company called OpenAI comes along, hires some of the best out of all of the companies. They do it as a nonprofit. They do it where- Do they the, poach them? Uh, very much, oh. very much. <laughs> and beyond that, with a poaching, usually you think about poaching, you offer a higher salary. It wasn't true in this case. Oh. The people took lower salaries on the idea that they were doing something good for society mm. by being a part of this nonprofit. Wow. Sam Altman, the CEO, goes in front of the Senate and says, I take uh, enough salary to pay my insurance, and that's it. <laughs> but the bogus part of what's hidden in that, he was the president of Y Combinator. And that is one of the most successful financial institutions of the startup world. Oh, so he's set. He doesn't really need to make any more money. It's saying, no. I'll only take an insurance payment if you're like a, a priest or a pastor. You know that person's making like a sacrifice. They're not rich, right? Yeah. They're not getting income. No, he's yeah. been well paid and well, well, well beyond any presentation in front of the Senate, anybody has any context to the situation will be aware this is not a person who is just self-sacrificing for the good of the world. Right. No, there's plenty more. Uh, so the Senate happens and it's a public hearing. All of the senators say things that the public might be worried about. Mm. Will this kill us? Will this <laughs> harm our children? Will this steal from us? So the kill us is phrased by Lindsey Graham, he's a senator, he says, could we program a drone to make decisions about who to kill? And hmm. Sam Altman says, yeah, that's a danger. Another senator from Tennessee who's representing Nashville says, can you steal music with this thing? I mean, we have a lot of musicians in Nashville, and could it violate the copyright of Garth Brooks? And Sam Altman says, oh. Oh yeah, they are doing that. Yeah, I saw happen. AI make like, um, Kanye West, he, they clipped like little videos of Kanye West's voice, making him sing an I Spice song, which he never even sang, but the AI clipped it to making him sing that. And then, yeah, <laughs> Drake, they have one of Drake too. So the I Spice song is the fun rap song. It's like, I Spice, shorty. No, I no, I Spice is like a new like female rapper. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's like is one of her ice songs. Spice? Yeah, it's her, not that's her. Ice spy. Ice spice. spice. Yeah. Mike Spice. So girl. they made it's Kanye West. Yeah, sing her song spice, with AI. Now ice spice. Okay. Mm -hmm, so they well, kind of stole his voice to like sing a song. And that's a real important thing yeah. that the answer Sam Altman has was we haven't figured out how to monetize that yet. The yeah. reality was he wasn't looking at it like we're not going to do it. He was looking at it like we'll pay the artists. Now, when Google did something about two decades ago called the Google Books Project, they went to libraries and they started scanning every single book and making it available. This is like a library. You can go to a library, check out a book, mm -hmm. we'll do it on Google Books. 
what did the publishing industry do? Sued them to hell. And the Google Book Project <laughs> died. It was like, bullshit. You can't do what you're trying to do yeah. because it's all copyright. And what you're trying to do is going to mess up the whole... Like, so there's that piece of it. But on the other hand, we'll take the case of this box. And by the way, I'm calling it Pandora's box. <laughs> That's the box that we'll sell called Pandora's box, $5,000. It's basically at cost. And you take an uh, open source model and it's got all those copyright issues in there, possibly, as a part of it. How do you protect your customers in that sense? Well, it's all available offline. Fundamentally, uh, we're selling it with that built in. So it's like our uh, responsibility in that sense to be, if we are in violation of anything, it turns out down the line, the people that pay that price. Mm. And our contracts say that basically it's our fault. If we sold you something faulty, we pay for it. Mm. Warranty on the legal violations.